everyone to Brain Food, a science-based menu that supports cognition. Uh, my name is Tanya Haas. I'm the in-house writer here at MedCan. Thank you so, so much for joining us, and we pardon the delay. This presentation is being recorded, will be made available at MedCan.com under MedCan Insights. Due to the volume of participants we have joining us today, we will be muting all income audio to ensure clarity. And thank you so much for everyone who did submit questions. We will be having a Q&A section right at the end of the seminar with Leslie Beck, our wonderful host. Uh, she's done so many webinars. We're so happy to have her back. Uh, now, you can submit questions throughout the presentation if, if we have time to uh, submit those questions. Uh, if you have time to submit, if we have time to address them, we will. And if not, perhaps uh, we, you can send us an email and, and we'll see if we can get back to you. Now, finally, I just want to let you know uh, that we will be also outlining the services that Leslie and her nutrition team do at MedCan. And we do have a special offer for all webinar attendees to thank you for joining us and also registrants who weren't able to attend today. They will get a follow-up email. And finally, just a, rem a reminder that the information in this webinar today is for educational and information purposes only. It is neither intended to be relied upon nor to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, especially since we're talking about mental health today. And now with all that being said, I am honored to introduce our, our uh, presenter. So Leslie Beck, you probably recognize this face from the Globe and Mail. Uh, she's also a best-selling author. She's the director of food and nutrition here at MedCan. She's, you hear her on the radio, you read her books, she, you see her on Indigo, you see her on Amazon. And Leslie, let's just get started. Thank you. Thank you thank so you, much. Tanya. All right. Well, thank you all for uh, joining me over your lunch break to, to talk about brain health today. Um, I'm, I'm really happy that with, for the turnout. So thank you very much for that. What I'm going to talk to, about today is essentially what to eat to optimize your brain health. I'm first going to talk a little bit about how foods and nutrients impact brain function and brain health. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the healthiest diets in the world. But I'm most of the presentation, I'm going to really be taking a deeper dive into a diet called the MIND diet and specifically tell you about that diet, the research behind it, and which foods we should be eating and which ones we should be limiting in order to preserve cognitive function. Um, and then as, as was mentioned, I'm, I'm happy to take your questions at the end. All right. So your diet has a powerful influence over brain function and brain health. I mean, your brain is always on. It doesn't rest when you sleep. It controls all the movements and functions in your body. In fact, the, your brain uses more energy than any other organ in your body, and it accounts for at least 20% of your body's energy consumption. Now, two thirds of that of the brain's calorie burning is used to help neurons or nerve cells fire or send signals. But the remaining one third is used for so-called housekeeping or keeping your brain cells healthy. So your brain, just like exercising muscles, requires a steady supply of fuel from the foods you eat. Um, and which foods that fuel comes from can make a big difference to the structure and the function of your brain, which ultimately, of course, affects your mood, your mental health, your ability to concentrate, um, and the rate at which co cognition declines as you age, and also the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So let's take a few examples and talk about that. Um, let's look at diet and mood, first of all. Um, so what you eat affects which brain chemicals, or we call them neurotransmitters, will be dominant in your brain, and that affects how you feel. Carbohydrates, for example, can make you feel tired because they increase the brain's level of an amino acid called tryptophan, and amino acids are the building blocks of protein foods. And tryptophan then is used by the brain to make a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And I'm sure most of you have heard about serotonin before. It's that feel-good brain chemical. It makes you feel relaxed and happy, among its other functions. Protein, on the other hand, raises the level of a different amino acid called tyrosine, and that prompts the brain to manufacture norepinephrine and dopamine, other neurotransmitters um, that help you feel energized because they promote alertness and activity. Um, it's also important, I think, to, to, to keep in mind that things like alcohol, caffeine, and sugar 
though all of those appear to lessen the effects of some neurotransmitters in your brain. So for example, we do know research has shown that caffeine, if you drink too much coffee, you get too much caffeine, that actually can block the release of a neurotransmitter called adenosine at the end of the day. And adenosine is really important because it relaxes the body, it prepares us for sleep. So caffeine can have a detrimental effect on that. All right, let's 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 talk a little bit about diet and mental health. Um, you know, the link between diet and cardiovascular disease or diet and obesity, that's it's, un, it's undeniable. And it's not new. We've known about that link for some time. Only recently, though, have scientists begun to explore the relationship between nutrition and mental health. And so far, the study findings are consistent and they're very compelling. What you eat and what you don't eat can have a powerful impact on mental health. Um, in fact, in a paper that was published in the journal Lancet back in 2015, there, a panel of international experts suggested that diet is, quote, as important to psychiatry as it is to cardiology, endocrinology, and gastroenterology. Wow, that's huge, because that is. hasn't always been the case. We haven't always associated what we eat with our brain. Absolutely, so this is a growing field of, of research, and we diet is a very powerful player. Mm. Um, so recent studies have connected a healthy dietary pattern, and that's one that includes lots of fruits and vegetables, fish and whole grains, to a lower risk of depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder in adults, in children, and in teenagers. Um, and diets thought to have a direct impact on many of the biological pathways that are involved in depression and other mental health disorders. So for example, the anti-inflammatory properties of nutrients in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, nuts and, and fish um, have been shown to influence concentrations of brain chemicals that regulate our emotions and our cognition. Um, the B vitamin called folate is needed for the production of serotonin um, and that's obviously responsible for maintaining mood balance. And there are also certain foods that feed our good gut bacteria. They're called prebiotics and you may have heard of them. So prebiotics may also be linked to better mental health since our gut microbes synthesize most of our body's serotonin. In fact, 70% of the serotonin in our body is made in our gut. So prebiotic foods include whole grains, artichoke, asparagus, bananas, garlic and onion are prebiotics, uh, so is chicory root, kefir is a prebiotic, and it's also a probiotic, meaning it contains healthy bacteria. Um, and interestingly, research has also found that when people take certain probiotic supplements, their anxiety levels, their perception of stress, and their mental um, outlook improve compared to people who don't use those probiotics. So let's move on um, to cognitive health. Um, but before we get started, I want to introduce you to three diets, some uh, or all of which you may be quite familiar with. So the Mediterranean diet, I'm sure most of us have heard about the Mediterranean diet. It really is considered the gold standard diet. It's been the focus of hundreds of studies that have found it to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, and also cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. And you wrote about that in the newsletter last month. I did. Yeah, that was your key article, how to Mediterranean yes, your diet. Yes, that's right, seven tips. So that was, um, because that really is one of the core elements of our food philosophy at MedCan, is we really leverage the elements of this well-studied plant-based diet. So, so the, the Mediterranean diet is mostly plant-based. It includes little red meat and olive oil, uh, which is a source of monounsaturated fat, is the principal fat that's used in the diet. The DASH diet, which starts, pardon me, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, was originally designed to lower elevated blood pressure, and it's been proven to do so very well in randomized controlled trials. But since then, it's been shown to provide many other health benefits, including preventing dementia. So the DASH diet includes plenty of whole grains, fruits and vegetables. It also includes low-fat dairy products. Um, it also includes some fish, some poultry, beans and lentils, and it encourages you to eat a small, a small amount of nuts and seeds several times a week. The MIND diet is relatively new. The MIND diet is actually a hybrid of the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, so it includes elements of both, but it also includes specific foods and nutrients that have been linked to optimal brain health in past studies. So the diet recommends 10 brain-healthy food groups, and it advises that five unhealthy 
food groups be limited? And I'm going to cover these foods in more de detail in just a minute. But let's look at the research first. I am very excited, and I think everyone who signed up, this is what we tuned in for. Good, I'm yeah. glad. That's great. Okay, so the MIND diet was developed by researchers at Rush University Medical School in Chicago. Um, it has been studied. It's been shown to slow cognitive decline in aging. Um, so one study conducted by the researchers found that among 960 adults who lived in retirement communities, average age was 81, those who followed the MIND diet most closely had slower declines in their cognitive function over the course of the study. And, the and what was really fascinating is the, that the difference in cognitive decline rates for people who had the highest MIND diet scores compared to the lowest was equivalent to being seven and a half years younger in age. The researchers also looked at Alzheimer's risk, and so they analyzed the diets of 923 community-dwelling Chicago residents. They, their ages ranged from 58 to 98, and then participants were scored on how closely their food intake matched the MIND diet, the Mediterranean diet, or the DASH diet. And people were followed for four and a half years, and during which time 144 participants developed Alzheimer's disease. So the findings, all three diets, when they were closely followed, significantly protected against Alzheimer's disease. The Mediterranean diet lowered the risk by 54%, the MIND diet by 53%, and the DASH diet by 39%. Here's the difference, though. It was only the MIND diet was shown, it was only the MIND diet that protected against Alzheimer's when it was not followed strictly. So people who followed the plan only moderately well had a 33 a 35, pardon me, percent lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease compared to people with the lowest adherence rates. So that's pretty powerful. You don't have to follow something to the letter to get a benefit. Um, and the findings also hinted that the longer a person ate or followed the MIND diet, the greater the protection from Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so let's dive in. What does the MIND diet look like? Um, and that's what I'm really going to talk about during the rest of this webinar. I'm going to highlight which specific foods to eat, how often we should be eating them, and how they work in the body uh, to promote brain health. Um, and I'll also, of course, at the end, talk about the five unhealthy brain foods that we should be limiting. Um, so leafy green vegetables. The MIND diet recommends we eat them six times a week. Now, I will note that the MIND diet doesn't look at serving size. It looks at frequency of eating them. Um, I've included serving sizes here. So for example, six servings a week, a serving size of leafy green vegetables is half a cup of cooked vegetables or a cup of raw greens. And you'll see them kale, collard greens, rapini, spinach, Swiss chard, and, and, and dark green lettuces as well. So leafy greens are excellent sources of vitamin K, folate, that B vitamin we talked about earlier, beta carotene and lutein, which are antioxidants, and all of these nutrients are th thought to help preserve brain functioning. And interestingly, you'll get more beta carotene and lutein if you eat your greens cooked rather than raw. And that's because heat breaks down cell walls in plants, so more of the antioxidants and minerals as well are released, making them more readily absorbed by our body. Vitamin E in salad dressings may also play a protective role. So vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin. It's found in many vegetable oils, but it's especially abundant in sunflower, safflower, and grapeseed oil. Um, and what vitamin E does, it actually helps our body absorb the antioxidants in leafy greens. And vitamin E is also has a, has a role in protecting brain cell membranes from free radical damage. So if you're not already eating leafy green vegetables, let, I really recommend that you up your intake. They have other benefits beyond the brain. Um, I, and, and I add them to a lot of different foods. So add chopped kale, Swiss chard, or collard greens. Um, I saute them with garlic and red chili flakes until tender. Um, I might drizzle a little bit of roasted sesame oil just before serving or squeeze some fresh lemon juice over them. Um, you can add raw kale leaves chopped to any soup. They're a great way to bump up your green intake. Um, I often will add baby spinach to a pasta sauce at the end of cooking. Um, and I, I add baby greens to chili as well, whether it's a turkey chili or a vegetarian chili. If, you're, if you just want some steamed greens, steamed spinach tastes great with a splash of raspberry vinegar on it before serving. Um, and rapini is a great vegetable to add to your diet too. Um, I think it tastes great uh, sauteed with minced garlic, chili flakes, and I would even add some, a bunch of chickpeas for a, for a vegetarian meal. 
So leafy greens, really important in the MIND diet. So are other vegetables. The diet recommends that at least one other vegetable per day, um, preferably more, but at least one. And again, a serving size is half a cup of cooked or raw vegetables or one cup of salad greens. Um, and, and I really encourage people to choose their vegetables by color because doing so is really going to increase the variety of phytochemicals that you, that you consume in your diet. And phytochemicals, they're not vitamins, they're not minerals, they're natural plant compounds. Some of them act as antioxidants, some of them as anti-inflammatories. They have many protective roles in the body um, and they're really categorized by color. So in addition to those greens we just talked about, include orange vegetables carrots, sweet potato, butternut squash, yellow vegetables have different kinds of carotenoids like yellow peppers. Um, red vegetables might be red peppers, tomatoes. I know tomatoes are really a fruit, but I'll, I'll include them on this list. Um, beets as well, purple vegetables, eggplant, purple cabbage, and even white vegetables or tan colored vegetables um, are very nutritional, such as onions, garlic, cauliflower, and mushrooms. So again, a wide variety of vegetables, colorful to increase your phytochemicals. I'm sure berries is no surprise to you. Most people have heard that berries are good for your brain. The MIND diet recommends consuming them at least twice a week, and a serving size would be a cup of berries. Um, studies have demonstrated the ability of strawberries, blueberries, and blackberries to slow down cognitive decline and actually improve memory in aging animals. Um, berries are very rich in polyphenols, and polyphenols are potent antioxidants that protect brain cells by fighting free radical damage and, and also reducing inflammation. But interestingly, more recent research has revealed that the polyphenols in berries also activate the brain's natural house cleaning process. And by doing so, it helps remove toxins and other compounds from brain cells before they can actually interfere with brain function. And there are certain brain cells called microglia. And these are the ones that are responsible for the cleanup and recycling of toxic proteins. And what happens in aging, the microglia fail to do their job properly and these toxic debris can build up. So polyphenols can really help your brains, you know, clean up, get rid of those toxic proteins. I think when it comes to brain health, blueberries and strawberries certainly have been the most studied, very, very protective, but there are many other that are rich in, in polyphenols as well. Um, and that those include acai berries, cherries, cranberries, plums and prunes are very antioxidant rich, pomegranate seeds, um, and red and purple grapes. So include a variety of them in, in your diet. And the thing about berries is great. When I ask my clients if they're already eating berries, most people say yes, we can get them year round now, Frozen are a great alternative when things are not in season. All right, what's next? Uh, nuts. Um, nuts, at least five servings a week or five times a week is recommended by the MIND diet. And a serving size is really small. It's just a small handful, an ounce or, or 28 grams, not a lot. Um, so and, and all types of nuts are protective. Um, so nuts can help lower elevated blood pressure. They can lower LDL or bad cholesterol, and they can also help reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And these are all factors that contribute, can contribute to memory loss and Alzheimer's disease. Um, nuts, especially almonds and hazelnuts, are, are a really good source of vitamin E. So we talked about the importance of vitamin E earlier. Um, but also, um, higher vitamin E levels um, are linked to less cognitive decline as we get older. And in fact, some observational research has shown that women who consume the most vitamin E from diet, so not from supplements, but from foods, uh, versus women who consume the least, have a lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. I want to talk about walnuts, because uh, walnuts may just be the king of nuts when it comes to brain health. Uh, research suggests that eating more walnuts can help improve memory, concentration, and the speed at which your brain processes information. Um, walnuts also have polyphenols, just like berries, um, and are thought to protect the brain by fending off free radicals, promoting communication between brain cells, and also supporting the growth of new brain cells. But walnuts also have something that no other nut has, and that's an omega-3 fat called alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA. And ALA also has anti-inflammatory effects in the body. Um, so re it's recommended to snack on a small serving of nuts most days of the week. 
My go-to snack is walnuts with organic dried apricots. I think it's a great combination. But you can also add nuts to salads, to stir fries, to grain pilafs. And, and I have many clients who like to add ground nuts, whether it's ground walnuts or ground almonds, which you can buy packaged in the grocery store. They add them to their smoothies. So you're featured in Sean Francis's new book a lot, quite a bit. And Sean says that he has a bowl of nuts at home and he just snacks. Is that what you recommend to your clients? You only need a small serving. So again, keep it small, an ounce, or even even a little bit less. But just be careful. Nuts, they're, they're high in fat, really healthy fat, but they're caloric. So if you're trying to control your weight, a lot of nuts adds up. Yeah, for example, a, a cup of peanuts has almost a thousand calories. So no unconscious eating. That's right. Be very mindful. That's right. All right. Pulses. You might or might not have heard of this term. When we talk about pulses, we're talking about lentils and beans. Beans like chickpeas, kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans. We should be consuming those to per keep our brain healthy four times a week. A serving size would be about three quarters of a cup. Um, and I think, I truly believe these are some of the healthiest foods on the planet. Um, so lentils and beans have low glycemic carbohydrate, meaning they provide a nice, steady, gradual stream of glucose or fuel to your brain cells. Um, plus, adding beans to your diet is all, can also help lower your blood pressure and your cholesterol, which helps keep your brain healthy. Um, and they're also an excellent source of that B vitamin folate. Um, and, B, and folate also helps prevent the accumulation of an amino acid called homocysteine. And high levels of homocysteine in the body are thought to be associated with declining cognitive function and also dementia. So for example, one serving of lentils, 13 and a half grams of plant protein, 12 grams of fiber that helps feed your microbiome, your, those good gut microbes, and two thirds of a day's worth of folate. So pretty impressive on the nutrition front. Add beans to salad. So maybe instead of adding chicken or tuna to your, your salad at lunch, throw in some chickpeas or black beans. You can add beans to soups. You can add beans to, to stews. Um, I, I usually replace ground meat or ground turkey and tacos with black beans. And I add some spices like cumin, chili powder. Um, Think about serving a, a bean salad as a side dish instead of rice or potato. Another way to get beans in your diet um, is, to, I don't know if anybody has tried bean pastas. So you can buy uh, black bean pasta, red lentil pasta, and they are incredibly high in protein and fiber. For example, one cup of a bean pasta cooked has 25 grams of protein and 12 grams of fiber. And if you don't want to, or you don't have time to soak dried beans and cook them before using them, buy canned beans. They're incredibly uh, convenient. And you, all you have to do is just drain them and rinse them to get rid of any excess sodium. And rinsing also helps get rid of some of the gas producing carbohydrates. So beans are great, part of the mind diet. And so are whole grains. Um, th at least three servings a day, a serving being half a cup of cooked grain, whether it's oats, quinoa, brown rice, um, half a cup of whole grain pasta. Not, It doesn't just have to be whole wheat pasta, it might be whole spelt or whole kamut pasta, or a slice of 100% whole grain bread. So as you've, you, you've been hearing me talk about earlier, foods that promote a healthy cardiovascular system, like whole grains in this case, are also good for your brain. And that's because your heart and blood vessels supply nutrient and oxygen rich blood to your brain. And if your brain doesn't get the blood flow it needs, it can impair your memory and your thinking abilities. The other great thing about whole grains is that fiber rich whole grains act as prebiotics and feed your good gut bacteria, which also is thought to play a role in brain health. Um, be adventurous. Um, think outside of the box of brown rice and quinoa and try other cooked grains like farro or free cake, those are wheat based, or gluten free whole grains like millet, sorghum and teff. These are readily available now in mainstream grocery stores and they taste great. They can be added to pilafs, you can make throw them into salads, so, so add variety. I, I, Another comment here about grains, raw oats are a very good source of prebiotics. And in fact, raw oats tend to be a little bit of a better prebiotic research suggests than cooked oats. So one way I often enjoy them for breakfast is I'll take half a cup of raw large flake oats, put them in a little bowl. I pour over my, my unflavored kefir, 
throw in my berries, maybe a little bit of ground flaxseed, and then I go off and get ready for work. 15 minutes later, I come back and enjoy them, and the oats are softened, but it, it's a great breakfast. And you, I, also, I also do a little bit of toasted coconut, maybe cinnamon, but that's a different way, especially if you don't want to do the overnight no, oats and you don't want to cook oats in the morning. I put protein powder in there. Is that okay? <laughs> I mean, that's okay, but I don't know if you need it. So the kefir that I use is a good source of protein. Um, and if you don't do dairy, some people do soy milk, but the other plant-based beverage, the only other one besides soy that has as much protein as dairy is pea milk. And that's becoming really popular right now, pea milk. It's made from, it's made from pulses, uh, yellow split peas. Well, so are almonds out and pea milk in? What's happened? Well, from a nutrition standpoint, in my opinion, yeah, I, I think pea milk is a much, well, it is a much more nutritious choice because it's got the protein. And actually, uh, pea milk also has 50% more calcium than in the same size serving of cow's milk. So it's a good alternative. Doesn't mean you can't use almond milk, but you've got to make sure you're getting your pro protein elsewhere. All right, let's move on to fish. Um, I'm sure most people associate fish with brain food. Um, the MIND diet recommends at least one serving a week. A serving is being is three ounces of cooked fish. Um, I off, I recommend that my clients eat fish at least twice a week, uh, and that's for, for cardiovascular health. Um, so salmon, trout, arctic char, anchovies, sardines, the fish you see there are your omega-3 rich fish. Um, and a number of studies have suggested that eating oily fish on a weekly basis can keep your brain healthy as you age. One four-year study, for example, of older adults revealed that those who ate fish at least once a week compared to people who rarely or never ate fish were 60% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, so omega-3 fats in fish, particularly one called DHA for short, um, that makes up about 60% of the communicating membranes um, of brain cells. And in brain cells, DHA, these omega-3 fatty acids, keep the lining of your brain cells flexible so that memory messages can pass easily between cells. Um, DM DHA also reduces inflammation. It's very anti-inflammatory. Um, and it's also thought to prevent the buildup of a protein called beta amyloid. And beta amyloid can interfere with communication between brain cells. So again, all of those best sources of, of omega-3s you see there, they're also all low in mercury. Um, now you might be thinking, well, you know what? I don't like fish or I don't cook it. Nobody in my family will eat it. So I'll just take a fish oil supplement. And it is true, fish oil supplements will provide you with DHA. But I think, you know, the other thing to keep in mind is that fish also contains other nutrients. Fatty fish is a great source of vitamin D. Sea, fish and seafood is a good source of selenium. So there are other nutrients that may have a synergistic effect to, for, for brain health besides omega-3 fatty acids. I'll, I'll go over this one quickly. Um, poultry, it's recommended tw to eat twice a week. And really this is as part of a healthy eating pattern, eating more chicken, more turkey and less red meat um, is associated with a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. And so we all know what to do with chicken and turkey, I'm sure. Okay, let's talk a little bit about olive oil. Again, um, just like the Mediterranean diet, in the MIND diet, olive oil is the primary cooking oil. Rich, rich source of monounsaturated fat, which has anti-inflammatory effects in the body. Uh, consuming more monounsaturated fat also can help improve how the body uses insulin and clears sugar from the bloodstream. Um, and so, so lots of benefits there. And the other thing, extra virgin olive oil, and that's EVOOO, contains phytochemicals um, that are believed to actually boost the production of two really important enzymes critical in moving beta amyloid, am, amyloid pardon me, from the brain. And, and again, beta amyloid is a sticky protein that accumulates in the brain, uh, disrupting communication between brain cells and eventually killing brain cells. Um, one more point there about extra virgin olive oil. A lot of people think, you know, they reserve it for salad dressings, which is great because you have that great flavor from the oil. And many people think you can't cook with it, but in fact, you can. Extra virgin olive oil has a smoke point of 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can cook with it and you can bake with it. Uh, and the smoke, what the smoke point means, that's the temperature at which an oil starts to burn and break down. So you can't stir fry at very high heats with extra virgin olive oil, but you certainly can saute those leafy greens or, or do some other things with them and, and bake. Okay. 
believe it or not, the wine, the wine diet, that's not what I meant to say at all. That's not. It's almost a long weekend. Yeah, Perhaps that's what we'll be having in a few hours. Perhaps. So the mine diet does allow one serving of wine a day. A serving is five ounces. Um, and studies do suggest that one small glass of wine each day helps preserve memory and reduce Alzheimer's risk. Uh, low, low levels of alcohol are thought to have anti-inflammatory effects in the brain. Too much alcohol, though, can damage the brain. Wine also contains polyphenols, but the polyphenols, those, those phytochemicals that we saw earlier in berries that are in walnuts, uh, the polyphenol content of wine varies quite a bit. And although both red and white wine contain polyphenols, red wine contains much higher levels um, because it's made using the entire grape, the skin and the seeds, whereas white wine is made just using only the grape juice. Um, and it also the process by which red wine is made allows more polyphenols to diffuse into the wine. And research suggests that red wine has 10 times more polyphenols, uh, a higher polyphenol content than white wine. Yeah, a little bit more. Trivia, not so much trivia, but this is from research as well. Um, research ha has shown that red wines from southwestern France and Sardinia and Italy um, have the highest level of polyphenols. So if you're a wine enthusiast, have one glass of French red wine. So I guess the important thing there is just the frequency again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one drink a day. Uh, and that's that is that's really important. And then in the blue zones, which you've talked about before, mm -hmm. those communities, they have a little bit of wine yeah. daily. That's right, mm -hmm. a little bit and with meals, mm -hmm. with meals. Okay, so let's move on to the mind diets, um, five brain unhealthy foods that we should be limiting. It advises that red meat, butter and hard stick margarine, cheese, pastries and sweets, and fried or fast food be limited. And these foods are really targeted because they're, they're higher in saturated fat and or trans fat, both fats which can damage the arteries. And certainly research has, has found that high intakes of saturated fat are associated with a greater risk of Alzheimer's disease. So these are the, and we've heard this before. We've heard this before. Okay, final word. Um, it's re as you're probably hearing, we're learning this for, for not just Alzheimer's prevention, but cardiovascular disease it's, and, and many, and cancer prevention. We really are, are now thinking beyond nutrients, not single nutrients, but we're thinking about all the healthy foods in our diet. And a growing body of evidence strongly suggests that your overall dietary pattern, your overall diet matters far more than any single nutrient does when it comes to reducing the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So uh, that's really, really important. Um, eating a combination of healthy foods that deliver a wide range of pr protective phytochemicals and nutrients, which probably very likely work in synergy to deliver their health benefits while at the same time minimizing your intake of foods that may harm brain cells is what counts. And there's no such thing as a superfood, so adding blueberries to a less than stellar diet isn't going to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. So on that note. Okay, um, thank you so much, thank Leslie. You. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the questions now. And uh, we do have a few questions. Now, before uh, you review the questions, uh, one of them is about what are the foods we're, we're to avoid? So maybe mm -hmm. you could talk about a little bit more about that. Um, but I'm just gonna tell you, I'm just gonna take a few moments to just talk about nutrition at MedCan. So uh, Leslie is part of the team at Nutri at MedCan. Uh, she's the director of food and nutrition, and she has an amazing crew of registered dietitians dietitians uh, working with her. And so because, uh, so we have three different programs at MedCan. We have the Healthy Living Program, we have the Performance Nutrition Program, and a Medical Nutrition Program. So it really is about personalized medicine, isn't it, Leslie? Isn't it? We're focused on what does the client need? What does that person need? What are their goals? What are their <clears throat> objectives? What is their lifestyle like? What's realistic for them to follow? And yeah, we really do, uh, all of our recommendations are customized to the client. My meal plans are very personalized to somebody's schedule and life and preferences. Right, so uh, for all the registrants for today's webinar, we wanted to give you an exclusive offer. So. We are offering 20% off uh, of the nutrition program. So that's with uh, registered dietitians uh, at MedCan. And the pricing and number of appointments and duration of the programs will vary. So if you do have any interest in um, speaking with a registered nutritionist, uh, uh, a registered dietitian, pardon me, you can contact uh, our nutrition coordinator at 416-350-5949 
or email nutrition at medcan.com. And this information can be explained uh, on the phone or by email, and the offer does expire in around a month's time. So uh, we're going to go to some questions now. So I actually have, could you, I have a, few, I have a question first, um, Leslie, about, uh, you, had, you had talked about coffee and protein. So we had talked about before about protein overload. How do you know when it's too much? Is that why you need a registered dietitian or can you, can you do that? Well, I, I think I think it's pretty hard for people to know, you know, how how much they specifically need in terms of protein and and how much they're actually consuming. So that yes, absolutely, a dietitian can help figure that out. But you know, what I see today is I think that many people I we're obsessed with protein today. We really, really are. We're putting protein into everything. My Globe Mail column this week was protein bread, but I've even seen protein water out there. And I think we're just we're we're you know, my message in that column was we're so focused on getting more protein at every turn what we really should be focusing on some of my messages today is eating more fiber because mm -hmm. that we're doing a poor job of we really need to feed our guts but your you know your protein will needs will depend on your activity level it will depend on whether or not you're following a low calorie diet to lose weight you need to eat more to maintain muscle mass as you lose weight it depends on your age older adults need a little bit more so there are many factors that impact your protein intake right so those 10 optimal foods i mean green leafy vegetables nuts berries protein mm -hmm. were in the fish and the chicken and the nuts and the, and nuts. the pulses okay right pulses, yeah, pulses. They, they're the underrated protein amazing for vegetarian of, yeah. yeah okay so and then coffee you spoke about that and that one of our questions is could you talk about brain fog and the mind diet i'm not sure what what the brain i mean brain fog can be caused by a few a number of different sure. things so I, I mean i think in the sense that the mind diet is supplying nutrients that are known and foods and specific nutrients known to um help optimal brain function that can certainly help your ability to concentrate to focus it can help your memory um, and and again as the study found you know the longer you follow a diet like this the more benefits you're going to get okay so uh, we've covered brain fog in the newsletter and sometimes that is after a person eats a really big lunch they're finding they're foggier after so a few hours later yeah that's that's one reason so if you eat a lot of carbohydrate and especially high glycemic carbohydrate that's digested very quickly spikes your blood sugar so when you get a lot of carbohydrate or glucose into your bloodstream um, your body's going to secrete a lot more insulin to, to clear that sugar away into your cells and so that can cause you to have of, you know a low blood sugar reaction sooner rather than later and and fatigue so often people say if they have a carb heavy lunch they will feel tired and and so it is coming back to protein I know we're talking about protein again but protein we remember we talked earlier in the slides protein um, increases the brain's production of dopamine and dopamine is that neurotransmitter that's associated with activity and alertness so you should definitely at lunch be including a good source of protein okay so you may have answered the second question now so if someone is allergic to nuts mm -hmm. and so you're you were telling us about walnuts have so many benefits yeah. and almonds and other nuts what what would you offer people who are allergic to nuts what uh, can seeds they absolutely seeds um, pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds hemp seeds chia seeds so chia seeds and hemp seeds and flax seed for that matter are also good sources of ALA alpha linolenic acid the plant-based omega-3 just like uh, walnuts are so yeah include seeds in your diet for sure okay so we're we're actually almost at time and is there anything I mean I have a question we had a webinar in January on brain health and and it was um, a leading researcher in brain health and he was a neuroscientist and we talked about diet then um, and it's not as if there's pure consensus on this is there it seems like the rush study out of Chicago it, we're not are we guaranteeing that you're not going to get Alzheimer's with this oh diet? I don't think we can guarantee we can't guarantee that you can not get heart disease by eating a heart healthy diet. Mm -hmm. So there, 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 are, there are many factors, but what we are really learning is that diet plays an important role and it can, it can keep you healthier, your brain healthier as you age. It is, it is an important factor, but it's not the only factor. Right, actually that was one of my questions. Do you think psychiatrists, psychologists will start prescribing food? I think so. Oh, they're, they're already doing it. I, I think are, so. Yeah. Absolutely. There, there's pretty compelling evidence out there around the role of nutrition and mental health. So working together with a registered dietitian, a psychologist, mm -hmm. or your registered dietitian and your 
physician, this is collaborative care. Absolutely. Right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Leslie. Well, thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. We appreciate your time. A recording will be sent to you immediately upon uh, the finish of this broadcast. We will also have sent some information to you about that offer. And if you have any other questions, please let us know. And we could have one of our nutritionists, nutrition coordinators get back to you if that's possible. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend and all the best. Bye-bye.